Assalamu alaikum I am Asma Mushtaq from the Dabali Vibes in this video lecture we are going to study about the timing diagram of the JK flip flop and before this concept you need to understand what is the block diagram of the JK flip flop and how we represent the truth table of it and based on that we will be able to draw the output waveforms fine so if you look at the block diagram you can clearly see there are three inputs that are mentioned two are the main inputs that will be controlling the outputs while the clock signal actually decides when the flip flop is going to change its output either on the rising edge of the input waveform so this is known as the rising edge means when the signal switches its state from 0 to 1 and if it is a negative edge triggering flip flop which means that the output will be changed based on the value of the input when the clock signal switches from 1 to 0 so this is basically negative edge triggered flip flop while this is known as the positive edge triggered flip flop so this is the information that you should need to know before drawing the timing diagram another thing is j and k are the main inputs fine q is the output that we will be actually drawing over here while you can see there are other two terminals one is the set input and the other one is the reset input if we apply a logic level one at the set input then initially the output of the flip-flop will be set or it will be made equal to one fine so if set input is equal to one then what will happen we have to actually decide the initial state of the flip-flop so that's why q out will be one and if you apply a logic level one at the reset input then it will force the output to go into this zero state so flip flop will produce output zero fine so basically the role of the set and the reset input is to decide the initial state of the flip flop fine now let's have a look at the truth table of the jk flip flop since there are two main inputs that are involved one is the j another one is k and here you will have the q out okay initially assume that we represent the retaining state or the initial state by the q o fine so assuming that the initial state of the flip flop was equal to q naught as you are having four two bit combinations so that way the possible outputs can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 and then 1 1 these are the possible input combinations for the two inputs j and k when both inputs are zero the flip flop actually stays in the retaining state so whatever the value of q note will be that will be initially set or reset it will retain it then when j goes to 0 and k becomes 1 then output becomes 0 so flip flop basically goes into the reset state and when j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0 then output of the flip flop is set when both inputs are equal to 1 then flip flop goes into the toggling state fine so basically q out will be toggled so based on this fact and the value of the clock signal we will be able to determine the value of the output signals okay so let's just start you can see that it's a positive edge triggering flip-flop for the negative edge triggering flip-flop there is always a bubble present before this sign fine now first of all we have to look at the values of the set and reset input since the set input is initially zero when the positive edge of the flip-flop is arising and the reset is equal to one so that's why we will ignore the values of j and k and we will actually reset the output equal to zero fine or your flip-flop will be actually in the reset state then what happens when the next positive edge 
of the clock arrives in this case you can see that the value of the j input is equal to 1 so this is basically 1 while k is equal to 0 so that's why what we will do we will look at the value of the reset since the reset signal is now deactivated it's equal to 0 so we will see that the input will force the output to become 1 so for this clock cycle you will you will have the output equal to 1 fine then for the next clock cycle you can see again j is equal to 1 and k both are equal to 1 so for this particular cycle both inputs are equal to 1 which will force the flip-flop to toggle what is meant by the toggling by the toggling we mean the output will be complemented so if the output was equal to 1 previously it will be shifted to 0 so that's why the output will be forced to change its state from 1 to 0 it has toggled now going to the next cycle you can see that still the j and k both are equal to 1 so it will force the output to toggle again so you will switch the output from 0 to 1 all right now moving to next you can see that when the next positive edge is arriving what happens k becomes 1 while j is equal to 0 so when k is equal to 1 and j is equal to 0 output is equal to 0 hence you will see the out will be output will be switched to 0 now the next clock cycle is arriving and at this point both input and sorry j and k both are equal to 0 when both inputs are 0 the flip flop actually retains its state by the retaining we mean that it will stay in the same state so here you will see output will be 0 now for all this process you notice that s input which means set and descent both were equal to 0 now here you can see we have actually set the flip flop so that's why the output will be forced to 1 in this way we have drawn the basic timing diagram of the jk flip flop one thing you should always remember that the flip flop change its state depending on the value of the jk flip flop only at the rising edge of the waveform no matter after the arrival of the rising edge the j and k inputs are changed fine and for this you can clearly see this portion here what happened after the arrival of the rising edge you notice that the j input switched its state from 1 to 0 while k was equal to 1 then accordingly what we notice that the output was not set it stayed equal to 1 because this is exactly what happened at the rising edge of the clock signal where the value of j was equal to 1 so it didn't actually introduce any kind of change because of this switching because at the rising edge of this clock cycle j value was equal to 1 and k value was also equal to 1 which actually resulted in the toggling of the output from 0 to 1 if you have any question you can ask in the comment section thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe